Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this beachy um, shell wind chime. But this time I use the uh, Capiz shells. They are these beautiful thin, um, they look almost like an opalescent kind of disc. And it is on a twine circle holding it up at the top and it just sounds so nice and it looks really nice having it inside or outside so follow along and i hope you guys enjoy watching this um i loved making this it sounds so nice and i can't wait to hang it up so um keep watching to see how i make this product so to start off, you're going to need some Kepi's shells. Also, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, so bear with me. I got ones that were pre-jilled and had this little hole at the top to make it a little bit easier when stringing them through, kind of eliminating one step. And then you're going to need some jute rope or any colored string that you'd like, some fishing line, and this is a wreath hoop. It's uh, made out of MDF, so it's very easy to just drill through. And you will need a glue gun as well. And additionally not shown here is a sewing needle. And lastly, a tool of your choice to drill some of the holes. Here I'm using this small um, non-electrical uh, hand drill. I can't remember what it's called exactly, but I use this for any of the smaller projects to drill through, such as any resin pieces or any shells um, or any soft material such as MDF. You just kind of, it's, I don't really know how to explain it, but uh, you just twist the middle part, you can hold the top and it does all the work for you without needing the use of a power tool. So I'm just going along and making some holes all the way around, um, just making sure that you go completely through. I believe I was going with uh, six holes, uh, relatively evenly spaced out. Uh, you can definitely do more or less. Six was kind of a great, um, not an overcrowded amount, but not too sparse where they wouldn't, uh, the shells wouldn't be hitting one another to actually make the sound. Next up, I'm taking some fishing line and just feeding it through those holes that we just made. I'm not taking a very long piece because these are just going to be markers for where the actual strands are going to go through after we glue the twine around. This way, we still know where the holes are, but we don't have to make holes after we put twine on and possibly damaging. Um, the twine that'll be going around. I then add just a drop of glue to them at the ends so both strands on top and bottom are held together and they're weighted down a little bit so uh, they kind of stay out of your way as you wrap the twine around. Then just starting from any point just adding some hot glue on top and wrapping the twine around I found the easiest way to do it was to actually cut a decent sized piece of twine and continue wrapping it and then once that ran out just make sure that you kind of seamlessly glue another piece over top of it and you just do this all the way around avoid putting any glue um, really close to the holes with the fishing line because we do want to um, feed our actual strands through there later on so just make sure it's not too tightly wound around them and that there's no glue super close to them. As you get towards the end of well the end or beginning of where you initially started your rope uh, you just want to try and make it as seamless as possible and glue them up really well after that, you'll have this beautiful ring. You can see the fishing line is still hanging out of where we initially glued it. So now it's time to trim those off and 
to grab your um, sewing needle and then we will be refining those holes and feeding it through. I found it to be just a little bit difficult to um, really hold on to the sewing needle when pulling it through the hole entirely because well, my fingertips aren't that strong and so I just ended up taking some small pliers. These are just jewelry pliers but uh, any sort of pliers will work just to pull it fully through. Then afterwards here I just added a, a drop of hot glue at the end so that way I know which one is the shorter top end uh, as opposed to the underside which is going to be the longer strand. You're going to want to flip it over and separate the twine a little bit and add some hot glue to the bottom making sure to push the ropes back together. Um, this it's okay if it's not the cleanest job you can see a little bit of glue because it is on the underside but if you are planning on hanging it up high then just kind of take that into consideration. Once you've put the drops of glue on all the uh, fishing line and you have all of them properly uh, fed through each of the holes, you want to collect all the top strands that had glue on them and furthermore glue them all together so you can see how long they all have to be and put them kind of in the right position to be attached to a metal hoop. Then with a small metal hoop, um, or you can leave it without it, depends how you're going to be hanging it, you want to tie it around there, uh, trim off the glue, and the top part is completely done. Now onto the fun part. We get to actually put our shells onto the fishing line and you can keep these all the same level or kind of alternate some higher some lower. Um, I first started off by taping down the fishing line at the top just so it made it a little bit easier not to move the whole top part while tying it on. After I made a small knot I put a tiny dab of hot glue to make sure that it stays in place and so that the knot doesn't slip. Then I'm kind of just measuring out by fingers. You can take a ruler, but I just do a certain amount of finger spaces in between each shell and uh, space them out evenly along each strand. And then once you have finished one, you want to see I did uh, between four and five shells per line. You can do a lot more or a lot less. It depends kind of on the size of your hoop. You want it to just look balanced but I did some with four some with five um, so some kind of came a little bit lower and just continued that all the way around. After you've tied all the shells on you want to just trim the very last one that you put on trim the, um, the fishing line so that it doesn't kind of stand out or anything. And that's all. That is how you make this beautiful uh, wind chime out of these shells. Um, they sound so beautiful and here is a finished look of them. Uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time watching this. I know a lot of people liked the last um, seashell wind chime that I did with some white shells. This time I thought I'd change it up a bit and it provides kind of a different look and a different sound. So give it a thumbs up if you liked it and uh, here's my cat coming home um, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in my next video.